Hey there, Python trainer Reuven Lerner here. In a previous video, I compared what it looks like when we create a list and append to it repeatedly versus what happens when we use a list comprehension. And here's the basic code that I looked at. We create an empty list output and then we iterate range 10 and for each of the numbers from zero through nine, up to 10 not including, we take the number, we square it, and then we add that to the output list. And we got this result, sure enough. I can similarly get the same result using a list comprehension. And I get, well, exactly the same result. But if I wrap this, these types of code, these different variations up into functions, we saw in that video that we get very different bytecodes. That basically our traditional function, let me load up here, import dis, dis dot dis of traditional. Our traditional function, uses a pretty straightforward set of bytecodes and goes little by little through and appending and doing a loop and all that other stuff. But if I say here dis dot dis of comprehension, we see that the comprehension is actually stored as a constant in our bytecode or alongside our bytecode and is then referred to by it. So someone contacted me and said, that's all nice and good, but what about generator expressions? What happens if we use those? So let's see what that would look like in terms of code. Well, first of all, if I say here, output equals, well, what is a generator expression gonna look like? It's actually gonna look just like our list comprehension, except that instead of regular parentheses, we will have round parentheses. And now after I've done that, output is, aha, output is a generator object. It's not the same as we got before. Previously, we were appending to a list and got our list. We were creating a list with a list comprehension and getting that list back here, the result of a generator expression or a generator comprehension is a generator object, meaning it knows how to behave inside of a loop, but otherwise doesn't really do us much good. So how is this going to work and how is this going to affect things? What happens when we do this inside of a function? So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say here def generator. And I'm going to say here return one number to the second power for one number in range 10. So what happens when I run this function? And by the way, let's not confuse here. This is not a generator function. This is a function called generator, right? A generator function would not return, rather the function would yield. But we would get back a generator object from running that function. In fact, you could argue that this is giving us exactly the same sort of thing that we would get from a generator function, just in a slightly different uh, way. So if I look now at my generator, dis dot dis of generator, what am I getting back? Let's look at the bytecodes. So once again, having a comprehension or a generator expression means that that is going to be byte compiled into its own separate code object and stored as a constant. And we see this because here we have load const one. And what is the constant there? Well, if we check what's generator dunder code co const. And we're gonna see here that indeed we have the generator constants. We also have a separate locals here. That's the local variable scope of our generator, right? Which is the same thing as we had with our uh, uh, list comprehension. So here we have the bytecodes of our compiled generator, generator expression. And here we have the function that's using it. So it actually looks almost identical to what we were doing before, right? We have the load global load const call function get iter call function, all that other stuff. Really, it looks almost identical. Well, how does it work in terms of speed? Well, I can say here, let's do a time it on comprehension. comprehension. And we're going to see once again that the comprehension, okay, 3.23 microseconds, not so bad. What if I say time it on our generator? Let's try that version of the function. And we're going to see that, that version of the function takes way, way, way less time. 500 nanoseconds, which is way less. It's like one-sixth of three microseconds. What's going on here? Why is it taking so much less time? Is it because generators are so incredibly fast? Not exactly. It's because the generator is not actually going through each of its values, right? We're not actually going through and iterating across the generator. The generator is simply being returned. What if I were to do a second version of the function? I'm going to call this generator, generator to list, generator to list. And now I'm going to say here, let's do a list of this thing. So what's that going to mean? We're going to have our generator, but our generator is going to be returned to the list. And then the list is actually going to iterate over the elements of our generator. So now if we look at dis.dis of generator, 
that's fine. That's not going to change. But if I now say, let's add a new one here, generator to list, what are we going to see? Well, load the global, load the constant. So we do have an actual additional thing here, and our return value is no longer going to be the return generator object. Rather, it's going to be the value that list returns, which is going to be a list. And so if I now run this, so I'm going to say now time it of generator to list, what are we going to see? And we're going to see actually that, well, I'm going to, 3.43 microseconds, meaning it's in the same ballpark here as what? As our list comprehension. So it is true that returning a generator expression will take less time than returning a list. And that's sort of what we try to do. One of the reasons we use generator expressions rather than list comprehensions is that we don't want to get all the values all at once. We don't want to get them all at once because we don't want to use that much memory all at once. And we also don't want to use all the computation right away. We want to spread the computation out over time only getting the values when we're actually needing them. And so if we were to return a generator, which is a good thing to do, then let's say I only want to get a new value once an hour. So why bunch all the computation up right away? So you can see then in summary that using a generator expression doesn't change the code very much. It's just changing the parentheses. You can see that doesn't change the byte codes very much either. It changes, however, the uh, execution time dramatically. But that's because we're actually pushing that execution up to later on, right? And, and then when we actually want to retrieve values, we're going to have to pay the price sometime, but we're going to have to get those values back. I hope this was useful. Keep the questions coming either uh, via email or on Twitter. Don't forget to subscribe to my Better Developers email list. And I look forward to getting more questions and answering them right here on this channel.